Hello, and welcome back to The Tracy Hamlin Show. I'm so excited about our next guest. He is a composer, pianist, and music educator from Loudoun County, Virginia. Welcome to the show, Quentin Walston. So happy to have you here. Thank you, Tracy. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, so tell us about your musical journey. How did you get started playing the piano and keyboards? Well, being a professional jazz pianist is kind of odd that I got my start not in jazz, not on the piano. I actually started being a professional musician in the bluegrass and folk genre. I was a singer and harmonica player for a band called Jake and the Burtones, and our climax was kind of touring around Virginia, North Carolina, and West Virginia. And as I was in that band, I was taking piano lessons on the side. This is all in high school. And I got more and more into jazz. And one of my friends, a bassist, was a jazz bassist. And he kind of encouraged me. And before I knew it, I was just pouring myself into jazz and decided to study that in college. I love it. So I did not know that you are a singer. Do tell. I, oh, my goodness. I never knew this. So what, you know, so you sang bluegrass song. Did you have professional training, or you just woke up and said, hey, I have a talent and I'm going to use it. <laughs> I think it was close to the latter. Now, I don't know if it was a talent. It was more like feeling a need. Um, right. We go to a lot of bluegrass jams, and I was like, well, if these guys can get along singing some uh, some old bluegrass songs, I'll take a stab at it. I love that. So do you, so you play piano, keyboards, you sing. Do you play any other instruments? I play a little bit of guitar, a little bit of banjo and harmonica still, but really most of my efforts now are on piano and composition. Wow. So a little bit of guitar, a little bit of banjo, a little bit of harmonica. Those are very unique, especially the banjo and the harmonica, very unique instruments. I mean, what made you want to pick up those instruments? I think that was from being in like submersing myself in that folk scene for uh, for those years when I was a teenager. Um, and what I love about the connection between that and jazz is that there's actually a lot of improvisation in both. And I think that's what really was the thing that brought me into jazz was just focusing on improvisation. How can I say something in the moment on this instrument? Wow, that is awesome. And And I mean, I hear, you know, the influences and when when I hear you play, I just, I love your music. I, I just love watching your videos. I just love the way everything you do just resonates and makes me want to hear more. So who are some of your influences? That's, that's a tough question because I feel like so much of my musical development has to do with the current sound that I'm after. So for instance, um, for a while, I was really interested in pianist Kenny Barron because he had such a wonderful balance of bebop and new contemporary approaches. So I'll kind of hover over different musicians based on what sound I'm after. But I do have to say I constantly love Thelonious Monk and Duke Ellington. I've never been able to get off those guys. I have a huge stack of Thelonious Monk records just outside that door. Something about his percussive playing, kind of his quirkiness. And I think ultimately he just was so steadfast on playing his own sound. He didn't really modify things to appease certain listeners. He's like, no, this is the sound I'm after. This is what I love. I'm going to develop it. And you can hear that in every single one of his pieces. And I'm just, I'm just electrified by that. I love that. I love that. So have you, um, have you collaborated with any other artists? Yeah, my most recent collaboration was with Ariana Harbin. Uh, she's a DC area vocalist. Uh, we played together. Yes. Yes, she's amazing. Very, very good. And uh, we did, I was in her band called Sweet Something, which does everything from jazz standards to more of like a neo soul um, style that features her original work. And then in the past, I've been part of artist residencies that are geared towards jazz composers. For instance, the Boise Lowry residency in Wilmington, Delaware, usually gets like 10 to 20 jazz composers together for a two week intensive seminar and we just work together. So that was a really cool experience for me to meet other jazz musicians and also get to study under masters that they brought in for different master classes. That sounds like an incredible program. So 
For our viewers that don't know what um, artist residencies are, can you explain what an artist, artist residence, residency yeah. is? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So usually there are some organization that encourages artists to just stay and focus on creating art. So you don't have to worry about all the other factors of being a professional musician. You can just be there and work on composition, development, rehearsals, stuff like that. So it's a really great opportunity for an artist to squeeze like a year's worth of development into two weeks. So that's what I got. I, I often said it was like a year of college just in those two weeks. And that's amazing because they don't choose just anybody to do that. So kudos to you, you know, for being in the view of, of folks that are recruiting people to do that because anybody that I know who, who've been a part of those programs, they are at the top of their game and they are absolutely excellent. So congrats to you. Appreciate it. Um, so when you're preparing for a performance, do you have any kind of finger exercises that you do? I always wonder, and I've never asked any of the pianists that I work with, but I mean, if you're doing a 75 minute show or a 90 minute show, do your fingers get tired? And, and what kind of warm ups do you do? I find that I usually will do a warm up and sound check, and that's mostly just playing together with my band. Um, but there's this interesting paradox where I don't want to play too much in the sound check because I don't want to get all my cool ideas out. And I don't think that that's actually going to happen. But just an inside part of me is like, no, save it for the show. Um, so yeah, usually it's just by doing, I, I warm up. I don't find that I, I run any specific scales or arpeggios or anything like that. Yeah, you know, when I'm working with with vocalists as well as for myself, I, I think it's I always have to bring home that it's so important to ready the vocal cords to sing, but it's also, like you said, very important to not overdo it so that you're vocally fatigued. Right, for, right. For the concert. So when you finish doing a, a, a set, you know, are your fingers tired or you know, I often wonder that with piano players and guitars, not basses, but with guitars, you know, I mean, I know you guys have, have worked up to being able to do what you do, you know, work up the muscles and everything, but still, are, you, are your fingers tired when you finish performing or? It, it depends. Sometimes I will get a little bit tired if it's one of those shows where everything is very technically demanding. Like if it's a high energy, like I love playing with my trio and we just do such a great job of, of building up the energy and building with each other, but not overshadowing one another. And sometimes in these shows, it'll just be high energy, high energy. And I might start to feel a little bit of fatigue up here because this is actually the muscles that control your fingers. Right. So sometimes, but I, I try not to, um, a lot of, pianists and what I teach my students is kind of effortless player playing. You want to make sure your playing is as mechanically efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so really being aware of what your body is doing. And if you can get that really down, hopefully you won't feel fatigue because you're really in control of what's happening mechanically. Mm -hmm. So I see behind you a piano as well as an electronic keyboard. Do you have a preference over which one you prefer to play? I almost always uh, prefer acoustic pianos. Um, that's what I, I studied on when I was in school. And that's what I'm most um, accustomed to playing. That's the music that I really seek out is listening to jazz pianists on acoustic pianos. Um, electric pianos are actually really helpful for my compositional process. So often I'll record or I'll have like um, an output, a MIDI output go directly into my laptop and I can record and tweak different melodic fragments that I'm working on or chord progressions. So I actually use the electronic piano more as a tool as to a performing instrument. Oh my goodness. See, I love these kinds of conversations because this is the kind of stuff that people wonder about, but nobody ever really asks or, or are privy to conversations like this. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, we are chatting it up with Quentin Walston, amazing composer, pianist, and educator. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back with the Tracy Hamlin Show. <laughs> 